Chair Eskridge, you are good to go. Okay. This meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at seven. Oh, I have seven o'clock on my clock, 7 p.m. Before we begin, I'd like to remind our commissioners of some procedural items for this virtual meeting. Commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If you have a question or comment, please use Zoom raise hand feature on your screen. You will be called upon to speak one at a time in the order of hand raising. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each agenda item which requires one. This art commission meeting will take place by teleconference as allowed by government code subdivision 54953E and resolution 1089-21. Reaffirmed September 27, 2022. Members of the public may provide audio comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the rain hat, raise hand feature to request to speak or star nine on a telephone. Teleconference meeting details are available on the Art Commission meeting agenda. Comments on matters not on the agenda must be obtained prior to the time the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on agenda Agenda items must be submitted prior to the time the chair closes the public hearing on the agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to a maximum of three minutes and time limits will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button. Roll call. City staff, may we please have roll call? Chair Eskridge? Present. Vice Chair Lamb? Present. Commissioner Vyth? Present. Commissioner Philly? Present. Commissioner Kaufman is currently absent. And uh, uh, Council Liaison Hendricks uh, is also absent. So we have uh, four members present with one absent. Okay. Okay, presentations, please hold any questions or public comment until the end of pre the presentation. 22-0903 uh, public art annual update. Staff present, the staff will present. Thank you, Chair Eskridge. Uh, my name is Trenton Hill, a recreation manager here with the city of Sunnyvale overseeing uh, our city's public art program. Uh, also joining me this evening is Kristen Dance. She's our public art coordinator uh, who uh, does all of the day-to-day -day work to make all of these installations actually appear in our lovely city. Um, so thank you guys for taking some time. This is one of our favorite presentations to do all year. As you guys know, public art is a, um, a fluid uh, medium and program and things are always changing and improving. Um, projects are always um, at various stages. And so there's a lot of moving parts. And so this is a great moment for us to just take a pause and a snapshot and reflect on all the great things that um, that you guys have participated in and approved over the past years, or sorry, past year. Uh, and then also just showcase some things that are in the works moving forward. Next slide, please. So what we'll be talking about tonight, uh, we're gonna give you some of the updates first in the art and private development program. So once again, those are for all of the um, projects that have either been approved by the commission or installed over the past 12 months. Uh, next, we'll be talking about some of the art and public places programs. So these are the city funded public space um, art installations, same thing. Uh, some of the ones that have gone recommended through this commission and approved by council, uh, and then some others that are in the process of getting installed. Uh, next, we'll talk about some of the other little cool projects and miscellaneous updates that we've got going on related to all the public art programs, as well as some special events. And then we'll talk about um, what's next moving forward. Next slide, please. Kristen. Okay, so I'm going to start by providing you with some of the art and private development updates that have happened uh, since last October uh, 2021. Uh, next slide. So in the last year, we've had five projects that were approved by the Arts Commission. Um, we have an additional five artworks 
that were installed, some of those may have been part of the five projects that were approved. Some of them may have been part of artworks that were approved before last year, um, because every art and private development project is kind of on a different timetable. But we also have an additional five artworks that were approved prior to October, all the way back to October 2019, so prior to October 2021. And those five projects we'll give you an update on, but they are still pending. Um, uh, try, they're, they're still pending fabrication and installation. Next slide. So our first one is a Fortinet program um, or project. It's at the corner of Commercial and Kiefer Road at 901 Kiefer Road in front of the Fortinet headquarters. It is um, Zhao Xie and it's called intersection it's a very large glass piece that has a lot of information on it there are benches out there so um, i highly suggest you go by and plan on spending a little bit of time out there because there's a lot going on it's a very complex piece with a lot of information um, the requirement for that particular project was two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. the artwork itself was $814,000. So it was about 3.8%. Um, they were only required 1%. Um, it was approved by the commission in October of 2020, and then it was installed a year later. So it's, it's pretty new. It's only been in place um, a little over a month, I think. Oh, I'm sorry, it's been installed in October 2021, so it's been there a year. Um, okay, next slide. Uh, this is a Jay Paul Company project. Um, it's a it's Gordon Huther is the artist. This is along Mary Avenue. It's also recently installed. It was installed installed last December. Um, it it the one percent requirement was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they came in right around one percent for the actual sculpture for their their expended costs. Uh, it was approved in July of 2020 and installed in December of 2021. Next slide. And a second Gordon Huther piece also by J. Paul Company is located at 625 North Matilda. Uh, and it's in place also. The building uh, I believe is still empty. It was last time I drove by. But their requirement, their 1% requirement was around $400,000. Their final costs were just over that $409,000. It also was approved in July, 2020, and it also was installed in December, 2021. So Gordon has had a busy year. Next slide. This is a Google project uh, at 242 Humboldt Court. It's Poshu Wang. And it's a very large sculpture that was approved in July of 2021 and installed in June 2022. So again, it's it's a recent one, and um, the requirement on it was 315,000, almost 316,000 dollars. We don't have the final costs. We're still working on uh, verifying all of that and registering the artwork with the county at this point. But it is in place. You can go and look at it. It's very interactive. Um, it uh, has a ring around the bottom, and when you activate that ring, um, it makes a tune based on where you're standing and how you're interacting with the piece. It's, it's actually really cool. Next slide, please. This piece was just installed about a month ago. It's by Charles Gadkin. It's on the corner of De Anza and Pastoria. I'm sorry. Pastoria and El Camino Real, and it's by De Anza Properties. It's right across the street from the existing uh, Department of Public Safety. This is a unique project because it is retail on the bottom, a very small portion of retail, and then there is uh, apartments, and uh, it's, it's part of the Grand Hotel uh, on El Camino Real. So their requirement was only $8,000, $7,699. I don't have the final costs in yet, so I can't tell you what it is, but I can, can tell you that the artwork was uh, above and beyond that $8,000 requirement. It was approved in March of 2022 and installed in September of 2022. So that was a pretty fast fabrication timeline that they had, but it's there and you can go by and see it. Uh, up close, you see all these little butterflies <clears throat> and from afar, 
the butterflies make apricot trees. So when you're standing across the street, it looks more like trees. When you're up close to it, you see the butterflies. Next slide. And recently downtown uh, by Hunter Properties, as part of the city line uh, project, there's two phases to this and phase one has two pieces. This one by Future Forms, it's called A Thousand Suns. It was required, the requirement for both artworks in phase one was $450,000. We have not gone through all the final costs yet, so I can't give you the cost of the, the, the two pieces individual, but they are installed just recently uh, and approved originally by the commission in January of 2020, installed in September of 2022. If you haven't been down there yet, make a trip. This is fantastic to stand under and the shadows and the lights are, are pretty amazing. And I should mention that they did have a, a formal ribbing, ribbon cutting ceremony a couple of weeks ago that was well attended and uh, very nice. So next slide. And this is the second piece that was installed that I was talking about as part of phase one. Um, this is Woody Otello, it's called Fountain. It's a large bronze piece. And again, the requirement was for both phases and we don't have the final cost, but it also was approved in July of, 20, or also installed in September of 2022 and approved in July of 2020. Next slide. This is a Google Caribbean piece. Um, it's by Google, one of their new buildings that is currently under construction. So the piece is still in fabrication. It has not been installed yet. The requirement for this project, it's a very large project, as you can see, is $1,810,593. It was approved in January of 2022. And for those of you who have been on the commission for a little while, you might recall that this particular piece, um, we have given a lighting exemption to. There was some issues with the lighting. Originally, it was going to be lit up with blue light, but it was determined that that was going to be very... Uh, it was going to interfere with kind of the, the ecological, the natural habitat out there because where from this picture where we're standing from this drawing, that would be right on the beginning of the Bay Trail. So it's um, it faces directly out to the Bay Trail and it wraps around uh, one side and a little bit of uh, the two sides also. So it's an extremely large piece. Uh, next slide. And this is another Google project that has been approved but not installed, still in fabrication, although I did talk to the, the uh, consultant on this last week. And um, she said she thinks it's going to be installed within the next couple of weeks. Um, it is a Michael Whiting piece, and this is on the former site of the original Atari building. It was $165,000, $250,000. That was the required 1%. It was approved in January. And again, it's not installed yet, but it's coming soon. Uh, next slide. This is a piece that's going to be downtown uh, directly across the street from uh, Plaza del Sol. So it is currently under construction also. And the piece is in fabrication. It was approved in May of 2021. And these are living walls. So they're going, it's a design that's being painted with paint, uh, with plants, basically. So it's going to be alive. It's on the ground floor. It's where all the, you can see all the colors. Um, and so we're waiting for that to be installed also. But again, that will not be installed until after construction is pretty much complete. So next slide. This is a piece that, um, also is in fabrication right now. The, uh, the project is Sunrise Assisted Living. It's on the corner of Fremont Avenue in Manet. Uh, and it's by Michael Kalish. The requirement on it is 115,000, almost $116,000. It was approved in March of 2021. Uh, and we are just watching the construction go along uh, and seeing it get a little farther along every day. So I don't know when they're expecting to install, but hopefully in the next year. Uh, next slide. This is a John Krasik piece called Castleton. It's also, it's an Irvine company project on Matilda. 
Um, it was approved in October of 2019. So it was improved quite a while ago, but the construction is not very far along on this particular project. So um, the, the piece, as far as I know, is in fabrication, but it's, it's not ready to be installed yet. So we're still waiting on it. And next slide. So a quick uh, in lieu fee update. We did have an in lieu fee that came in this year. It was a Fortinet project. It was a parking lot. Um, and they opted to go ahead and use the in lieu fee option as opposed to putting the artwork on site. So that was $113,000 that went into the public art fund. The balance of the fund back in October of 2021 was $618,000. Against that, we are now spending down the $50,000 that was approved for utility boxes and $100,000 that is approved for the ICOM project, which we'll talk a little bit more about in the next segment. Um, but that's just starting to ramp up. So our current balance in the public art fund is probably around $581,000. Next slide. All right, and Trenton. You're muted. All right, go ahead, Ricky, next slide, please. We've got a few updates here for some of the um, art and public places projects that have gone on in the past 12 years. Or 12 months. Um, so we've got uh, we for the Civic Center Amphitheater, uh, there are going to be, um, sorry, let me take half a step back here. The Civic Center project is going to have three portions of public art. Uh, the first phase was for the amphitheater, and that um, portion we had 58 artists who applied, and five of those artists were eventually selected by a selection committee. Uh, to develop their uh, conceptual proposals. Those proposals were uh, presented to the Arts Commission uh, just this past January, and City Council had approved uh, in February 2022 um, a Linda Brunker piece, which you can see on the bottom is a conceptual um, portion of that. And we expect that to be installed in quarter two or three of 2023, which will also depend on how um, uh, that portion of the uh, project is completed at that time. Next slide. And additionally, uh, the second selection of artwork uh, for the Civic Center City Hall project is the interior art. And there are gonna be four levels of the Civic Center building. Each level in the lobby, there is a little alcove, um, that will be able to house public art. So we need to find four artists. A selection committee reviewed 58 artists for this um, RFP. 10 of them were selected since there were gonna be eventually, or sorry, 10 artists were selected to develop proposals. And eventually that 10 uh, would be whittled down to four. The Arts Commission reviewed this in August of 2022 and made the recommendation to city council who then selected four artists in September of 2022, just last uh, past month. Uh, this one's a tight turnaround, and our artists are busy working with Kristen, and we expect installation to happen uh, in December of this year. Next slide. The other fun thing, a long time coming, was our utility box program, our program, which was is called the Great Box Cover-Up. Our first phase, uh, one of three, uh, centered in the downtown area, and we had there are 12 city-owned signal boxes, uh, and just a little asterisk on that, there are 12 locations. Some locations, as the one you see ahead of us, have more than one box at them. So uh, there are about 30 to 40 boxes that are painted. No, not that many. Around 30 boxes that are painted in the downtown area. Uh, but 12 locations where you can see um, these lovely boxes that have been painted and we've heard nothing but great things. Uh, the installation took place in this past April and May. Uh, and we thank the artists for all their time. Most of them, well, all of them are local artists in that they are uh, Bay Area or neighboring to Sunnyvale. The next phase that we've got uh, will also focus on some of the neighborhood areas. And so that one will be a wider reach uh, that will reach other neighborhoods in Sunnyvale. And we expect uh, those to also be painted in the spring. Next slide, please. And lastly, as Kristen mentioned, the ICONS project, which is, is ramping up and catching some momentum. Uh, as she had mentioned, council had already uh, approved the concept and allocated $100,000 for this project. Uh, since then, we've been conducting community surveys and outreach meetings, 
to help select what that icon might be. Uh, these are the sharks of San Jose. So as you can see, they're also very fun. Uh, and basically what this is, uh, just to, uh, what the icons project, that's kind of what we've entitled it. But this is the prefabricated sculptures, such as a shark, uh, that have been modified by artists. And so the, they get a base sculpture and then the artists get to use that canvas uh, for their artistic interpretation. So we need Insightville to just select one. And so we did a community survey to help collect ideas. And then we did another one to help prioritize and rank those um, ideas. We'll be coming back to you guys in this winter to help select what that icon will be. Uh, so there are a number of things, of course, suns is one of the most popular ones and parrots, uh, some tech things, some nodes to other industry. And so it was a wide list. Um, and so we'll be coming to you guys to help narrow that and make your recommendation to council who will ultimately select that icon uh, this winter as well. Once that icon is selected, uh, we, we as staff will then uh, finalize uh, a design with a fabric, a basic design with the fabricator. Uh, and then we'll go out to the typical RFP process or RFQ process. Uh, we'll basically call for artists. We'll encourage um, a number of artists and we're hoping to do uh, at least 15 and maybe 20, uh, depending on the size and scope of these, but we're hoping to put a lot of them that will eventually be in our open spaces, um, you know, public parks and other spots where uh, the public do like to gather. Next slide, please. Next slide. Some other things we've got going on, a continual ongoing one is we are constantly updating our online photo gallery to get the most current photos. It's kind of a rolling process. Obviously when pieces are recently installed, we get professional photo photographs, but pieces that have been installed a number of years ago um, have not been updated. And so that's something that we do ongoing, especially if we've got a photographer that's already gonna be on site for a special event. We're like, hey, since you're in our neighborhood, could you go photograph those pieces down the street as well? So that's something that just happens uh, periodically throughout the year. And we'll hear a little bit more about yarn art in the park. Uh, but this is one of the fun ones too. It's not quite a public art program, um, <laughs> but it is more of a public art experience in terms of the funding is what I'm referencing there. Uh, cool. And so this was, happened. the install happened about two weeks ago and it was a great opportunity and you'll hear more about it during staff comment in a little bit, uh, but it was a great opportunity for the community to get involved in workshops, as you can see below. Uh, Commissioner uh, Vyth has had volunteered to help lead this project on behalf of the Arts Commission uh, and city staff to help get engaged with the community. And it was a really um, awesome opportunity and people nonstop, hey, this is great to see you guys uh, putting this up in the park immediately. It was an awesome instant gratification from the community. And then also this past year, uh, the annual uh, Hands on the Arts Festival returned to be in person for the first time since 2019. The Arts Commission uh, did a great job hosting um, a booth, as well as this year, we combined our Hands on the Arts Festival with the first ever Sunnyvale Cultural Celebration. So it was a combined event that really focused on celebrating various cultures and everything that goes in there, as well as the arts in that environment as well. Next slide. Some of the things we've done, obviously with the installation of the utility boxes, we were able to then create another walking tour map of just the utility boxes. We also could update some of the other ones as well. Kristen's been getting her steps in uh, and she's in the past year provided uh, three in-person public art tours. These are free for the community, uh, for anybody that wants to participate. On average, they're about two hours, one and a half to two hours, uh, but it's a nice casual pace in that, you know, you walk a little bit and then you stop and you enjoy the art and you hear some of the background information about it. Um, and so they're wonderful things in terms of being able to get uh, more of the community involved in public art and to learn more about these things that they drive by or visit and don't necessarily know any of the backstories on. And these are going to always continually be updated uh, and we'll be adding more as art gets more congregated in walking areas. We've also heard requests for biking tours. And so that's on our list. Uh, it's not going to happen anytime soon uh, in terms of we've got our hands full with all, uh, a few other projects, but we hear the requests and welcome any feedback uh, on ways you would guys like to experience the public art here in Sunnyvale. Next slide. So here we go. What do we got in the next, uh, the next 12 months plus? Next slide. So just 
it's just, just an FYI, kind of at basically over the last five, six years that I've been here, at any given time, there are actually about 20 projects that are open for private development, uh, but they're at various phases. They literally, open means they just filed a permit yesterday, and it also means they installed it two months ago and they now are submitting all of their things. And so as you saw earlier, some of those have been from 2019. So some projects get done within a year, others it takes multiple years to do that. Uh, and that's not anything that the city controls, it's obviously private development. So we, um, Kristen and city staff help support the developers through that process. Uh, and so it's kind of all over that. Uh, we'll, of course, we'll be bringing back the Hands, Arts, Hands on the Arts Festival in 2023, as well as the Sunnyvale Cultural Celebration. And so we're looking forward to doing that. And we'll scope those in early 2023 about uh, what your participation levels might want to be. Uh, next level, or next slide. And we kind of covered most of the Civic Center Public Art. Uh, the next thing that you'll also see in 2023 is the Rotating Sculpture Program. That's on the corner of All America Way and Matilda. There'll be a cement pad uh, that we'll, we'll be going out uh, to basically doing a rotating sculpture, meaning we basically lease or rent a piece of art for, for a year or whatever the specific time frame might be. And then we give that one back to the artist or to the gallery and we bring in um, another piece. And so we'll be bringing that next year. Phase two of the uh, utility box art program the call for artists is going to be going out this winter, installation next spring. Phase three, which is going to mainly focus on boxes near schools, uh, high schools. And so we'll be collaborating with high schools. That one's going to take a little bit more time to get wheels in motion, but that's going to be the following year. And then the uh, Lakewood Library and Park, those are two separate projects, but they're kind of working concurrently. Uh, there'll be opportunities to have artwork both in the park side as well as the uh, branch library building itself. And then lastly, the community center grounds renovation project. Uh, they just completed the community outreach portion and we'll be finalizing the summary of all of those results and presenting a final design concept to basically redo the entire park grounds here at the community center. So all the buildings are gonna remain the same, but the park, including the, the, the fountains, the walkways uh, and the turf areas, those are all going to be um, renovated. And so that uh, is expected to go to Parks and Rec Commission this winter with uh, hopefully uh, council approving a design uh, shortly thereafter uh, in either 2022 or early 2023. And so there'll be a public art component with that too. That might get started in 2023. It'll just all depend on the final timeline for that project's uh, renovation. And that's it. Next slide. I'm happy, and Chris and I are happy to help answer any questions about anything over the past 12 months or so, as well as anything moving forward. Are there any questions from the commissioners and please use your raise hand feature. It's been a great busy year. <laughs> has it's been very rewarding though so we're looking forward to continuing on with a lot of uh, upcoming projects that um, are exciting I see commissioner vice has her hand raised so i don't have a question but tacking on to what commissioner lamb said i hadn't realized how busy we were until i saw all of this <laughs> so well done staff <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I like to make a comment. I, over the past year, I've visited quite a few of the sculptures. The one on Java with the sound installation is really, really cool. That photo doesn't give do justice. And yeah, I've just if you're out and about, it's really nice to go and see all that we've accomplished as a city, and uh, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> A little footnote on that one, as it is in North Sunnyvale, uh, as Chris and I talk about expanding what walking tours might be available, that area in particular, because of so much development and change, that's one of the walking tours <laughs> that would constantly be getting updated. So we're hoping that development kind of settles a little bit, <laughs> just so we can help keep that one 
a little more accurate. Yeah, it was hard to find it. <laughs> it's just like, it was hard to find that one, but yeah, it's worth it once you find it. So. Yeah, and you're right. The photo did not do it justice. That was actually a, a, one of the original renderings because I don't have any of the pr professional photographs that have been taken of it yet. But yeah, uh, so it looks more like it looks more like aluminum and shiny as opposed to gray and black. So yeah, it is. Yeah. There, there was a design change at the last minute uh, because the 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 black coating that they were going to use they realized wasn't going to work really well and was going to detract from the piece over time. So um, we ended up not using the black coating. So it's a little misleading. Sorry about that. It's all I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any public comment? None at this time. Okay. All right. Um, oral communications. A reminder to the public, please. Raise your digital hand or dial star nine and a telephone if you wish to address the commission on a topic that's not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it's your turn to address the commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications? None at this time. Okay, consent calendar. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will once again ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Uh, city staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? None at this time. Okay, I will now ask for a motion from my colleagues to approve the consent calendar. I move to approve the consent calendar. Do I have a second? I second it. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Commissioner Kaufman? Yes. Commissioner Philly? Yes. Commissioner Veit? Yes. Vice Chair Lamb? Yes. Chair Eskridge? Yes. The motion moves five to zero. Okay. And next on the agenda is uh, item 22-0372. Uh, recommend council approve art and private development project, Hunter property, Hunter property city line titled heads. Heads, phase two artwork one of four in a temporary location up to three years and require submittal of the permanent artwork location, landscaping and lighting and all of that. So I guess I'm reading right. Landscaping and lighting plans for council approval prior to permanently relocating it to Redwood Square. Staff will present. Hi, thank you. Uh, I have a very, very short presentation because the developers um, enter properties. Uh, D. Hunter is here tonight, as well as Ellie Hunter, who is the uh, consultant or the art liaison on the project. She's been advising uh, in terms of the arts project. And a just a couple uh, notes. This is um, uh, part of the artwork. As we saw in our earlier presentation, there were two new pieces that were just installed in downtown as part of phase, phase one of the artwork for City Line. City Line has multiple um, artworks that are coming down the pike. Uh, so we have uh, tonight the first artwork that will be part of phase two is being presented. However, this artwork uh, will be going into Redwood Square, which has not been designed yet, but that is the area around the existing large redwood trees uh, that were saved on the property. So for the time being, um, Hunter Properties has uh, made arrangements to have the artwork installed into a temporary location. Um, so that's what you're being asked to approve tonight or what you're being asked to, um, to review is the, the artwork itself, the temporary location. The recommendation does include um, a stipulation that the once Redwood Square is completely planned out, um, then within nine months of that, the developer does need to bring back the new location for the commission to review and city council to approve. So that brings me to the second point that I want to keep in mind is that normally 
uh, art and private development projects are reviewed and approved. Uh, final approval is left up to the Arts Commission. However, this project has a special development permit associated with it. Uh, it's also very, very visible. Um, it's a, a very important project to the city. So the city council did require that the artwork be approved by them. So tonight you will be developing a recommendation based on um, after the review. So uh, as you can see, the recommendation is very lengthy because this is kind of a unique situation. Uh, so when somebody makes a motion, you'll wanna have that kind of in hand. <laughs> If you wanna approve it as it's being proposed, you can just read that recommendation. Um, okay, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Deke and Ellie uh, to present and give you more information on not only the project, but the artist's artwork. So um, Ricky, I'll just tell you when to go to the next slide. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having us tonight. We are excited to present this work by Olaf Bruning. Um, slide, please. Uh, as Kristen mentioned, this is a proposal for a temporary location. We have just finished installing our first two pieces at City Line. The first one by Woody Othello, which is the uh, blue dot on the slide right across from the Whole Foods AMC um, alongside which we also installed a pocket park so that visitors to the downtown can spend time around the sculpture and have some green space while uh, Redwood Square is under construction. And then the second artwork that we installed was 1000 Suns, which is the pink dot. And we really wanna continue this push of invigorating the McKinley corridor as um, the development is still in progress and really uh, continue to create spaces for people visiting downtown Sunnyvale to enjoy art and enjoy a unique landscape and experience, which is why we've decided to make a push to get this artwork in even before the um, corresponding development phase is completed. So um, if you could go to the next slide, Ricky. Um, so in our comprehensive overall vision for the City Line Art Plan, we're looking to include artists from a diversity of backgrounds. And um, part of that is also including artists who are local, like Future Forms and Woody, our first two, and then bringing in international and some international artists into the program, um, which we also think reflects some of the population of Sunnyvale. Um, so this artist that we've selected, his name is Olaf Bruning. He is from Switzerland and uh, works between Switzerland and New York. Um, and he uses a lot of humor and language and kind of absurdist gestures in his artwork. Um, and he, he's a really credentialed artist. He has, um, he's a gallery artist who's shown at the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York, at the Whitney Museum, at the Pompidou in Paris. And then he's also has a vast repertoire of public art commissions. So he's done work with the um, uh, Public Art Fund in Central Park. He was just part of the redevelopment of LaGuardia Airport in New York. Uh, he's done projects for Art Basel, Miami Beach. So as with um, Woody, who has shown at some of these same institutions and future forms who's done commission, who have done commissions for uh, companies like Uber and uh, they're doing a new project in the city of San Jose. Uh, one thing that we're really looking at is the artist's ability to engage the public and connect with people um, through their ideas and their visual language. And uh, we, we were really attracted to Olaf's vast experience in the public art realm and in, engaging people on this kind of monumental scale. Um, so really quickly, the next two slides um, show some past artworks. The bottom one is the Central Park installation. You can kind of see the clouds in the background. And then the next slide shows some of his really playful um, gallery artworks. Um, 
So then if you go to the next slide, Ricky, um, this is the piece that we're proposing for downtown Sunnyvale at City Line. Um, the piece is called Heads, and it's a series of five reflective silhouettes of a cartoon-shaped head, and they're all life-size, so when you walk up to them, you're kind of eye-to-eye -eye with these figures. Um, and so Olaf Bruning, he repurposes and adopts iconography of pop culture in a, as a way to make a commentary on how the current generation is so intertwined with the internet. Um, and in approaching these sculptures, he's asking, how do we react to the avalanche of stimuli that the technological world floods us with? So he hopes, with the re reflectivity, he hopes to create moments of pausing and pondering. Um, he does this by getting our attention with the kind of simplified pop statements and emojis that are at the center of the heads. But then when we stop, when our attention is grabbed and we stopped, we notice our surroundings reflected back to us and stop to think anew about um, how we're reacting to all of this information and stimulus. Uh, so if you could go to the next slide, it's kind of a close up of one of these in a, on the left it's in a public setting and on the right it's in a gallery setting. And uh, if you could keep clicking through that's a close-up of one of the profiles and then um, next slide this shows the technical drawings next slide so here you can see um, how we're planning to situate the sculptures on the corner of Aries and Matilda there's an existing lawn here, so we'd really like to activate that green space and add some benches around the artworks, which are represented by the two brown boxes. Um, and just create a really nice moment for people to stop, uh, especially people who are drawn in from Matilda. And then um, there's also the environment of the Flats apartments and Urban Eats and a bunch of new um, retail draws right on that corner. And we've just seen with the first two pieces already how it's been driving so much momentum and foot traffic and selfie opportunities and unique ways to engage with the environment. And we would love to create an interim space for that to continue to happen here. Uh, and then if you go to the next slide, this is a, um, a rendering, it doesn't include the benches, but it just shows them situated along the lawn. And then finally, um, this the slide after this, just as a kind of a nod to what's to come, um, how we picture them being situated in Redwood Square, which as Kristen mentioned, we would go through another approvals process once the park design is finalized, but um, we think that they would be really special in the park because they'd be reflecting not only the passersby, but also the redwood trees and the greenery of the park environment. And um, yeah, we could just imagine them really amplifying the social space and creating a lot of opportunities for engagement. And uh, there's one more slide showing them in Redwood Square. And um, yeah, then I'll turn it back over. Great, great job, Ellie. Uh, this is Dee Hunter. I'm the developer of the project, and um, I can't say enough how uh, uh, how happy we are with the first two installations. You know, it's an interesting time in downtown, as we always have constant construction going on. So, as we're trying to activate the public realm, um, the artwork has just been a, just a little bit of stimulus to help the foot traffic in and around the downtown. So, that's what we were excited to bring. Not wait for Revit Square, which is probably still probably a solid 20 months from being done, as you all see the steel come out of the ground. And, um, and so instead of keeping Olaf's piece under lock, we thought we found a, a neat location right at the beginning of McKinley. As you come in off of Matilda, you get to the first cross street, right where the retail starts to begin with urban plates on your right, which is the south side of the street and City National Bank on your left. And into that corridor, you head a thousand suns, and then you transfer through the end of the next block all the way down to Woody's piece 
in the little pocket park that um, we added in as, as we thought would be kind of a nice way to hold that piece of art. So uh, we're excited about this. We think it's a, it's a great solution and a fun way to keep things moving and not you know, sort of stand still for the next you know, two years. And that's it for our presentation. Any uh, questions? Agnes? So will the um, pieces that you are proposing be the same material that we saw um, when we unveiled um, and Woody's and A Thousand Sons? Yes, that was one of the five. That's actually one of the actual ones. Okay. How easy is it going to be to maintain the shininess of these pieces? Pretty easy. It's just a stainless steel. It's a lot like the Thousand Suns. So, you know, we'll clean it from time to time. Hopefully they won't be quite as popular to the birds as the <laughs> Thousand Suns has been. It's been a, <laughs> we have, uh, we had a, an unfound clientele, I'd say with, with the Thousand Suns and some of the, uh, the birds in the area, but these will be relatively easy. They're pedestrian style and scale. So um, like anything of value, we'll need to take care of them. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Donna, take it away. Okay, real quick, um, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? None at this time. Okay, so, um, so um, I guess we should move to approve, recommend the approval. I'll sorry, read the whole thing. Recommend council approve art and private development project under property city lines titled heads. Phase two, artwork one of four in a temporary location for up to three years and requires submittal of the permanent artwork location. Landscaping and lighting plans for council approval prior to permanently relocating to Redwood Square. Okay, do I have a first on that one? Did you just read the motion, Chair Estridge, and are, and are we seconding your motion? I need a first. For okay, that. I'll provide a first. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Commissioner Philly? Agreed. Commissioner Veith? Proof. Vice Chair Lamb? Proof. Chair Eskridge? Approve. Commissioner Kaufman. Approve. The motion passes five to zero. Thank you, Deke. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Okay, thank you. Have a good night, thank you. Okay. All right, next item on the agenda is item 22-0707. Recommend city council accept proposed unconditional Donation of art titled Idol Den Emon House Collage from the Sunnyvale Art Club and Light Zuka Art Association. Um, since we remain in a virtual setting, I was colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Is there a, and the staff will do a presentation first. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, sorry, I just lost my notes. But tonight the um, commission is being asked to review. We have a uh, proposed donation that is through the Sunnyvale Art Club and this, their sister city arts organization, uh, the Izuka uh, Art Association. And they have, uh, back during COVID, they were kind of looking for ways to interact and, um, you know, when you weren't allowed to be around people. And so they came up with an idea uh, to go ahead and uh, 
um, recreate the Deniman House, which is a landmark in, um, in Izuka. And they took a photograph and they divided it into 24 squares and 14, um, sorry, 28 squares and 14 artists from Sunnyvale and 14 artists from Izuko all volunteered. They each took a square and recreated it. So this is the final piece that you're looking at here. They, they, they want to donate it to the city. If you can go to the next slide. So this is a detail. Um, you can, you can see how different the styles are between the artists and the way that they interpreted each of each square of their uh, particular photograph. Um, and so it came out very different, uh, but it's basically a large collage. It's currently hanging in the senior center. We, we did find a location for it that it works, works really well in. So we are recommending that um, it be in that location. Uh, you can go back to the original original. Um, staff is recommending approval uh, and that we accept the donation. Again, this will go to council uh, for final approval of the uh, donation. So the Arts Commission is developing a recommendation to the council tonight uh, to accept this piece. Um, but it will be very different than anything we have in the current permanent art collection. Uh, so um, we're excited about that. It's a very different technique. It's a very different look. Um, it's very well done and high quality. So um, staff is recommending that uh, the donation be accepted at this time. And that concludes my staff report. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Hey, Kristen, so where would this piece of art be used for? So it's currently, um, if we accept the donation, it would become part of the permanent art collection and be cared for by the, by the uh, public art program and public art team. Um, it is currently installed in the senior center directly across from the uh, main counter, the front registration counter on one of the walls. Um, and uh, it looks great. It really does. Uh, I have to admit. Cool. Right, but... <laughs> It works well within the space that we've identified. Uh, Catherine? Um, so because there was, it was done with the, the sister city, do they also have a comparable piece of art? Did they end up with a finalized piece? Or did we end up with the only finalized piece? As far as I know, we ended up with the only finalized piece. Um, and I think that had to do mostly with the fact that the woman who was spearheading all of this was part of the Sunnyvale Art Club. Um, it was it was her idea. She uh, kind of oversaw it all and, and made all the arrangements. And so her idea was that she wanted it to uh, come to Sunnyvale. Okay. Yeah, it's. I agree. It's lovely. Okay, I don't, oh. oh. And, and we do have a All member right. of the public. Uh, Neela, you are good to go. You have three minutes. Hello, my name is Neela Shukla and I am talking on behalf of me and not the planning commission. Um, so I'm a member of art club and I wanted to just give you a little bit more information that we are doing the other project uh, with the same city. But this time we have taken a photograph of Fremont uh, High School, and wow. uh, and then we uh, we did half of the painting and we sent them uh, half fourteen paintings and now they are going to hang it there as a part Itzuka and there is a tour going on next year sometime that we some members are going from here to Japan, so I think I just wanted to update that uh, for the. Uh, art commissions so then um, so then they know that it's still going on so there is another piece exactly like that but it's about Fremont country Fremont high school thank you thank you very much Neela I hadn't heard that yet and that's that's very exciting yeah okay 
Okay, so city staff, do we have any members? Oh, well, we did, Neela just spoke. Okay, so um, I will now ask for a discussion or a motion from my colleagues. I move to accept the donation from the Sunnyvale Art Club to be part of the permanent arts collection for Sunnyvale. I second it. Okay, we'll now ask for a random order voice vote. Commissioner Vice. Approve. Vice Chair Lamb. Approve. Chair Eskridge. Approve. Commissioner Philly. Approve. Commissioner Kaufman. Approve. The motion passes to receive this beautiful piece of art. So, okay, next standing item, consideration of potential study issues. Item 22-1018, discussion and consideration of that potential study issue, high quality art at affordable low income housing. Staff will provide background. And then Trenton, can you please provide uh, a brief update uh, of the study issue and then uh, Donna will be able to uh, explore more on it. Yeah, sorry, thank you. I was just trying to find that in the agenda packet. Uh, so thank you all, and, and thank you, uh, Chair Eskridge, for submitting this for consideration. Uh, so staff received uh, the study issue form. We had reviewed it uh, and just wanted to also comment that this uh, proposed study issue would also require an update to this. Oh, sorry, let me take a step back. Um, as Chair Eskridge mentioned, this is for affordable low-income housing um, and in those areas that there would be high-quality art. And so staff just wanted to add in terms of context and additional information and things to consider as this idea moves forward, um, potentially that it would require an update, obviously the current art ordinance, the currently the art and private development ordinance, uh, which is municipal code 19.52.030. Uh, it, it, it doesn't align as this project itself um, is a residential project in nature. And so that currently does not trigger a public art requirement. Furthermore, the Eurowinds does not require developer, developers to work with artists that represent a community or member of a specific population. Uh, and then lastly, the art in public places uh, policy only covers art in public places and that does not govern art. Uh, so those are things that would need to be considered as this project moves forward. Thank you. And then Donna, do, would you like to provide uh, more insight on your study issue before we open for comments? Yeah, so I was just, uh, you know, appreciating how much beautiful artwork we have in the city. And then I also know we have quite a few low income housing um, projects going on at the same time. And I just thought it would be really nice if those housing developments also had some sort of public art um, since for that community being outdoors and being near that for them, that's public. They're part of the public of the housing that would be there. And um, then I was thinking that people who live and low income housing does not necessarily mean you no know, low income. It could be somebody making $80,000 a year and still considered low income. So it's not like, you know, not to get thoughts twisted, but it's for people who are with families or whatever that would be in those environments. And that maybe there would be an artist or some sort of participation from that group to, to, to be eligible to bid for art projects if there were artists in that area or creating a uh, space like um, where artwork could be displayed or like we have at the community center, we have those wooden panels. So having a location where maybe art could be displayed in those locations. Um, and I wasn't totally, I mean, I know that we have the art and private development and I wasn't, when I was thinking about it, I wasn't thinking about municipal codes and all that kind of stuff, but it was just a thought that it would be cool if some of the housing 
apartments like one you know one street is like a high rise development for a corporation and then right across the street there's low income housing and those areas aren't considered for like having artwork and I think it would be nice if those areas would be considered to have artwork and I'm not sure how it would get paid for and if you have to change the code that if they're building low income a certain percentage would go to art. I didn't think of any of those things. I was just thinking of the pure idea, so. Agnes? So what are the thoughts that staff has on this particular study issue as presented? I'll take a first stab and, and welcome, welcome my colleagues to also comment as well. Um, is, is mentioned in terms of the scope and things that we need to be considered. Housing um, typically um, has not been included for public art requirements in terms of the standard practice, but you got to start somewhere. So just because nobody else or our neighboring cities haven't done it, that may or may necessarily not negate that. So that's exactly what a study issue process is for in terms of investigating these options, seeing how viable they are, um, as uh, Chair Eskridge mentioned, funding sources is the biggest one typically for housing developments that may or may not be applicable. And so there's just a number of things that need to be considered. Staff at this point um, uh, don't have a recommendation one way or another, other than uh, we've done some just initial research on things, areas that we would need to learn more about um, as this moves forward. I mean, it, I mean, it could be, I mean, if, for instance, like if a corporation puts in 1%, you could add a little thing like, oh, okay, the 0.25% could be used for housing or something. I mean, it could still filter from corporate funding. Um, but anyway, it was just, yeah. And if it had, and I know if it had to change the ordinance, they would have to go through council and would have to change all the, you know, a whole, a whole area of the, city code so yeah and naturally by your by the title of this this would be a great opportunity to get the housing commission involved to get the gauge their input um so i'd also encourage you to to reach out to them um mm -hmm. and staff can help facilitate that so if you if you want to shoot ricky an email we can we can get you in contact with the right people okay and i see damon also raised his hand well i'll let the um Commissioners, go ahead and ask questions or comment. And then Mr. Philly. Thank you. Um, so I am I to understand that if an apartment block is built, say a whole, a whole block of apartments, that there is currently no art that is included in that um, unless the, the planners decide to do it themselves. Correct, yes, that's the current ordinance. So for instance, as we mentioned in the public art update um, slide, the property that's on the corner of Pastoria and El Camino, the ground floor is like just ballparking, 90% parking garage. And then that small percentage is retail. So as the ordinance is currently laid out, only the retail portion of that property and the correlating expenses is eligible for the public art requirement. So housing has always been something that was um, not, uh, an eligible exp expense. So correct. If an apartment building goes up, there's no retail or commercial or anything else. It's just strictly residential. They are not required. A footnote on that one. We do have one property uh, off of Lawrence. Kristen, I'm getting I'm drawing a blank on the property. But the Avalon, is, is it the Avalon? With yes. the, uh, yeah, Avalon. Yeah, with the, the uh, kind of obelisk in the so like Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. giant stones or Kristen go ahead and chime in well so there are uh, two or three uh, developments that that have residential that also have artwork the Avalon was one that was a very early on project that was a special development permit and the city did require artwork um, the one on Lawrence Station Road uh, so you said the city did require artwork for that as part of the special development permit. So in other words, they were asking for something out of the norm uh, and the exchange was public art. Um, they also, if you look at the ordinance are along a major corridor. So they were required to do it. This, this project was back in 19, 
it was one of the first ones I ever worked on. So it must've been like 1996, 1997, somewhere in there. Last century. Uh, and then the Irvine project, uh, the Cherry Orchard, where the apartments are, uh, where P.F. Chang's is, that big development. That was another one um, because of a special development permit, they were required to do artwork um, because the residential part doesn't trigger it, but you're right, the commercial part would, or the retail would, but it's, but it's a very low amount. Does that answer your question? Uh, it, it, it does. Um, and I, I would say that based upon this short conversation that I would support uh, Commissioner Eskridge's request for a potential study issue. Damien? Yeah, I, a couple of uh, points I'd like to make is that, um, in, or to reiterate what Trenton was mentioning that, uh, just because it hasn't been doesn't mean it can't be. And, um, you know, even the residential development within the city of Sunnyvale has the landscape of that has changed through the years where it's less single family and more high density housing. Um, so what I would suggest is uh, that uh, the commission consider um, giving some suggestions of and or ideas as um, to help build on what Chair Eskridge's idea is. And then staff will take this input and work directly with Chair Eskridge to write the final paper that will then go forward uh, for ranking uh, to council. Um, that way, because uh, we're on a, a little bit of a tight timeline uh, with this round of the study issue process. Um, so if everybody could uh, provide a little bit of feedback um, as you are, um, things that you would like for us and uh, Chair Eskridge to consider as we develop the final paper that will actually um, be put forward to council. That would be great tonight to help provide some direction to staff. Commissioner Veith. So I have, I have a question and a comment. Does this, and I agree, I think it's a great idea does this have to be part of the ordinance or could there just be a conversation with a developer that builds affordable housing to ask them to include artwork within their development? So that is a question. And then the comment I have is I'm involved in an organization and I can't right now speak for the organization, but I could propose this to them as something that we ask developers to do as we endorse projects and then speak before council on the projects we would endorse. I think what we're dealing with here is, um, rel it depends on what the total what the final product is. Um, as Chair Eskridge mentioned, she was putting some ideas out. Um, the, as public art stands relative to development in the city of Sunnyvale, it's a requirement of commercial uh, development. So in order to, if, you know, suggesting is one thing, but making it a standard requirement of uh, residential developments in the future uh, would require an update uh, and, and or change to the current municipal code. Commissioner Lamb. Yeah, so Donna, you might've mentioned this um, as you were talking about the proposal. Um, where are you proposing that the funding would come from? Well, for instance, when, so the, when a private developer brought, buys land and for housing, then that private developer comes up with the funding in and of themselves. Um, but like, if it's a corporation, then that's when we say like, okay, you want to have your corporation work in the, so there's, so the private developers 
would have to either be approached and say like, okay, in order for you to have this type of project in Sunnyvale, you can mimic what we do with other developments and put a certain percentage of your cost towards art. Um, or we could have the corporations, I mean, we already up, I think we increased their percentage from 1% to 1.5% or something. So I'm not sure if we could allocate a small percentage of that that could go towards that. Um, but I know there's that's the two funding sources and it's not like you could go to like the National Endowment of the Arts or something for a project. It, have, it would have to be part of their budget for like land acquisition and building and, and all that kind of stuff. And even, and I don't know if we could say like, well, if it's, you know, like you were saying the one facing Lawrence or the one um, if it's facing a major thoroughfare, then, you know, if, if it, that would kind of almost be on two levels of public, public art and also resident. So I'm not sure if it's, if it's on a, having artwork on a public busy street would make a difference as opposed to a housing that's like not on a public street. Um, but I mean, I think that would be the two sources of funding. I don't, can't visualize any other sources other than that. Commissioner Philly? So I would propose that this would be for not just affordable low-income housing, but for any high-density housing in the Sunnyvale area. Um, and I, I don't know what the, the definitions are, but you know, something over 10 units, um, you know, some whatever reason the reasonable, there there has to be some sort of scale that they base this on. Um, but as a outside idea, then maybe there's also a, it's either so many units or so much, so much if the project is worth say 20 million, and that's also equivalent to a 10 unit house or 10 unit housing complex, um, that, that it would be that, a, you know, one, one percent of the total cost would go towards art, um, but that would also include any houses that are $20 million houses that are being built. And if they could, then that, that, that money goes into a general fund to put art in places that is, can't afford the art. Mm -hmm. so. as, a, as a really quick, um note for the commissioners that the some high points of the current requirement for private development are two acres non-residential um and it's two percent of the valuation of the project um and if they want to do an in lieu it would be a one percent so that'd be like i don't want to use my property to put art on it i would give one percent to the public art fund for the city um, to reallocate. Uh, and that is, so that exists already? That is for private development, um, non-residential. So, you know, we could work with uh, Chair Eskridge and talk and, and talk through if you want to mimic, but is it an acreage? Is it total units? Um, is, it, is it high density? Uh, and then work with, um, you know, the housing uh, department to come up with what's considered high density. So we could we can work through some of these things. Um, yeah, and so I know like for public private development, like we have huge sculptures and stuff. For residential, I mean, if there's like an interior courtyard, it could be something that's not publicly accessed. It could be like something that's in the interior. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be like a huge sculpture or something like that. So just, just something that the residents would appreciate some sort of artwork in their environment and um, whether the artwork is solicited by regular artists that we usually solicit or if we put out, like we did a call for the um, 
utility boxes. And so a lot of different people on different artistic levels applied for that, that if there was like some sort of art project and like, okay, a call for artists to work in this project for this housing, some interior courtyard where there's, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm just getting into the art part, but, um, but yeah, so, um, cause I, and what our conversation now wouldn't take into effect for like three or four or five years. So I realized anything that's going on now would not have to adhere to this. Um, so. Yeah, to that last point, uh, Chair Eskridge, um, when we implemented the increase or when council implemented the increase or approved the increase to the art and private development, all um, current projects were exempt from the increase and it would, it would only apply to all, to all future permits being pulled. Um, so similarly, we could, this would be applied. However, I would like to clarify for um, the chair and the commission that the art and private development does not uh, discuss that level of detail or requirement. Sculptures, small, resin, it doesn't get into the, the real details. There's, it, there's high level, there's lighting, public access, and a couple of high level things. It's, it, it, uh, the city and the municipal code doesn't delve into that level of detail or control over the um, developer's selection of the art. Commissioner Veit. So it might be interesting to have a conversation with the planning department because the city is in the process of, um, they've identified seven different village centers and the village centers contain different levels of income of what's referred to as affordable housing, either um, extremely low on up to moderate, and each of those has a different um, economic um, dollar amount to them, but it might be interesting to involve planning in this as well, to see if there's some way that when they work with the developers on these village centers, that they can recommend, um, instead of, I don't know how lucrative this would be for the developer, either not taking a tax credit or doing an in-lieu fee and then we can build the art. So that plan, talking to planning might be an idea as well. Mr. Kaufman. And it looks like you're currently on mute, there it goes. Yeah. I don't know if it had helped to um, look at what other cities have done, but I know in San Francisco, um, for commercial, new commercial buildings, um, new residential buildings, uh, they require some sort of art um, work. Um, and sometimes it is in an entryway that there's like a fountain or something like that. But um, it's sort of what we've been talking about. And it's not just for um, low income, I think it's for all um, new residential, multiple um, apartment buildings and that sort of thing. So uh, at this point also, we'd like to uh, inform the commission that tonight you're, we're asking um, for- awesome for just the support of this item to be added to your portfolio for future vote to move forward uh, to council for consideration uh, in concept. And um, again, we would turn around a more comprehensive um, paper for city manager and council review. And another note, and it's come up a couple of times, that when there are potentially other commissions um, that might, uh, that any study issues might cross over, that we engage those commissions and or list them on the study issue for their consideration and potential ranking. So uh, we had one recently where we had a crossover in the Parks and Recreation Commission 
with environmental services. Um, and it had to do with pesticide use um, in parks. So um, it, it does happen where um, it'll either be considered across multiple commissions or at least referenced um, for uh, feedback from those various commissions or um, staff liaisons. So is that something where once we kind of get the wording, we would present this to the other commissions to see if they had anything to add or would we have like, I mean, how, or is that something you guys do as a the staff? You work with their liaisons? And yeah, we'd work with the liaisons. And like I said, I, this has happened once in my, in my five years being, being here. So we'll, we'll work with the, um, we'll work with the uh, other commission and the staff liaison to make sure we consider and, and if it needs to be also listed as an interested commission for that study. That way also council when they're ranking and rating these things, understand and see the connection, connection between the different, um, the different areas or the different purviews. Okay. All right, so will I ask for a sponsor for adding a study issue to the, is that what I do? I ask for my colleagues to sponsor adding the study issue to the post study issue list. Is that, is that pretty much it? Is and that something we vote on? Is there is just- All I need is one sponsor. I'll sponsor it. <laughs> I'll co-sponsor it. <laughs> no, I mean, I will help. I will. <laughs> We can do this together, Chair Estridge. Okay. <laughs> All right. That sounds good. Thank you. Perfect. So the ad study issue is added to our list. Um, staff will have 30 days to write a paper. Uh, we will get in touch with uh, the other commission, um, and then we will uh, try to provide more information as we uh, narrow this down and get it fine-tuned. Because is it, I think with the ranking is in January. Is that when that is? When they rank the study issue? So we have to get all of this kind of concise by January. Yeah, the city manager will need to review by December 1st. Um, so th it is a tight timeline because we'll need to write it and then also get it routed uh, for uh, other staff uh, throughout the city to review. Okay. All right. And I don't have to type anything. That's y'all job, right? <laughs> we just email and you just come up with ideas and then you guys will create the documents. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, next, do we have any non-agenda items and comments? Commissioner Bythe? Is this where I can talk about the art install? Yes. Okay, and Damien won't have to get mad at me. <laughs> so first of all, I wanted to say that we had our yarn in the park installation on Friday the 14th, and it was a big success. We covered two benches in front of Washington Swim Center. We covered one, two poles, two lamp poles, and because of the weaving workshop that Molly helped with, we were able to cover some of the windows and um, Kat had helped with the installation. So as, as we were installing and people were walking by, we had a lot of really positive comments about it. We have one lamp post yet to cover that Kristen and Trenton and I are working on. Um, and I want to thank Kristen and Trenton for all of their efforts on this. It's really cool. So Kristen, you want to add anything? Uh, I, I just think it's really fun. And if you haven't been out there to see it yet, I encourage you to uh, take a trip out to Washington Park and take a look. Uh, maybe give it a day or two because we're, as Agnes pointed out, we have one more lamppost that we're going to be covering hopefully tomorrow. Um, and, um, yeah, but it's also, uh, there's been a few posts on Facebook about it, uh, with a lot of comments, uh, real positive comments. People are loving it. So thank you to the arts commission for supporting the project. Agnes, who did all the hard work. <laughs> Uh, 
And Chair Eskridge, would you like to open up for staff comments? Okay, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will once again ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate to they wish to speak. Do we have any non-agenda items or comments from commissioners? So I think we just did commissioners. Uh, oh yeah, now city staff, staff, do we have any non-agenda items or comments? None at this time, I think you're all good to go. Oh, okay. uh, Winnie, did you have a comment for, uh, for the commission? Yeah, I just wanted to update everybody. Um, so I know last year uh, during the Arts Commission meetings, we've talked about uh, activities for the winter holidays. And so I just wanted to thank the uh, team here, Damon, um, uh, Trenton and Kristen for their support in doing the Gingerbread Village again this year um, at the library and such. Um, and I do have a question for you guys while we're all on the call here. Um, so one thing that we're going to do differently this year is um, I've been in conversations with the Sunnyvale Downtown Association and for the annual tree lighting ceremony um, in Sunnyvale, um, we're going to put the Gingerbread Village there first. We're going to launch it there and then we're going to transport it to the library afterwards. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be OK to transport those acrylic tops that we had purchased to the downtown event as well. Yeah, of course, uh, you know, just like anything, just do your best to try to make sure they don't get scratched or dinged up. Uh, of course. But yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's all. Okay. Oh, yeah. And this year we also have the um, the great candy cane hunt. Um, this year we're not. Last year, I think the Art Commission and others voted on the candy canes, but this year... There's just going to be candy canes out there. Um, and so that's something to look forward to in Thanksgiving through the beginning of the year. Commissioner Weiss? So there, there weren't enough participants in the community to decorate the candy canes? Or do we know yet since Monday, I think, was the deadline? Um, Monday was the deadline. Haven't heard anything, so. OK. <laughs> there were enough participants so it will be taking place oh okay. yay okay thank you okay um okay i guess there's another uh, information only item 22101117 art commission proposed study, study issue calendar year 2023 um commissioners are there any other study issues you like to agendize for discussion at our next meeting. And then just for clarification, the next, uh, if you, if you uh, submit any study issues, it would go to the 2024 um, study issues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it looks like there are none at this time. Okay. Okay, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation in tonight's meeting. The meeting is adjourned at 8.27 p.m. Or 829. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Thank you.